Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 23rd, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is, as we start this week, right out of the gate, that we will have a new moon. And this new moon is happening in the sign of Pisces. Now, whenever it is that we have an important lunar event in a given sign, it brings focus to that very energy. In fact, it amplifies that energy for us all. And it is this time that more of us are gonna be thinking about what healthy compassion and genuine empathy actually look like. What does it feel like? In fact, feeling is especially high on the list with energy like this as it is Pisces that is very much about feeling our way through, not necessarily about understanding or rationality, more about trusting the instincts on a very profound level at times. Now that's why the energy of Pisces is also connected to music as well, glamour, art, wherever it is that we are presenting something that's almost not practical, not contained, like music has a tendency to be, that is when we're accessing Piscean energy in our world. And so it is gonna be this awareness of not only compassion, but also communion of integration that is going to be highlighted for many of us now. This new moon is further supported by the connections it's making with other power players. One is a retrograde Mercury not too far from this new moon. The new moon will also on one side be speaking in harmony with Mars. Now, if you remember last week, I did speak about Mars moving into the sign of Capricorn and how it is that the ancients said Mars in this sign is considered exalted. It's able to bring forward its best energies of control and focus and determination. On the other side, this new moon is speaking in harmony with Uranus and that is energy of brilliance of quick changes and also when it's a harmonious connection I actually think that this is a lucky break that can seem to come out of nowhere at times because Mercury is retrograde this is wonderful opportunity that does indicate that opportunity comes back around under a sky like this and all of us in at least one area of life may find that that is a part of the surprise of this time. That where it was they thought an opportunity had come and gone, where it was that it felt like perhaps something could come together here and then it didn't, now is the time when it starts to feel as if the inspiration, the idea, and the practical ways in which the universe can bring things together now, well, I think that's gonna be especially delightful for most of us out there. But it isn't just about the new moon. The energies of the new moon end up being extended throughout the week because of other important connections that are taking place with the planets involved in the new moon. And so it is gonna be right around Tuesday and Wednesday that the sun and Mercury will meet in the sky and both of these planets will reach out and speak in harmony with Mars. Now, I did wanna speak about Mars for just a moment because what's interesting is when we look at myth, when we look at the mythology uh, of ancient Greece, where it came to understanding the energy of Mars, we see stories come up again and again that are centered around impulsiveness, that are centered around this idea of uh, Mars just doing something and then it having an impact and he didn't even think that far for it to have the kind of impact. So whether it's trusting his passions where it comes to Venus, right? He moved very quickly where it came to Venus but also where it came in particular to his arrows. He had this tendency of just, you know, being in the moment, having fun, shooting his arrows all over the place rather impulsively and hurting others as a result. Well, it is Mars in Capricorn that avoids the more impulsive side of this energy and instead decides consciously where it is that that arrow needs to be pointed towards, focused towards, and calculates exactly when and how to release the arrow so it goes to its intended aim. So the fact that the Sun and Mercury both will be speaking in harmony, the type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile, the most dominant conversation taking place this week, well, it does suggest that we are 
consciously understanding how it is that if we tap into the focus and emotional control of Mars right now, we actually can move ourselves in a more inspired direction, move ourselves in a direction of greater interconnection with ourselves, certainly with others as well. It's almost as if by controlling the emotions, we can feel more deeply. We have the space to understand how to have genuine empathy, but also where it is that healthy actions can make the most difference. Now, one of the places where our empathy and our compassion very often is needed is towards ourselves. Yes, towards the collective as well. And very often where it is that we give, where we think less of ourselves, the energy of Pisces is also one of sacrifice, where it is that we are willing to sacrifice and lose ourselves in that. It's interesting how it is a spiritual truth that we also find ourselves in the process. Well, it is this very energy that invites us to consider where is it that we can really give ourselves, sacrifice ourselves, pour ourselves in a particular direction with conscious intent so that ultimately we can be led back to our own power. Now that's certainly physical power, spiritual power with Mars, but also mind level power as well. So Mercury is continuing to move through the sign of Pisces. Mercury tends to not be very strong in this sign. And so just Mercury being in Pisces is like a Mercury retrograde. And then you add to that Mercury actually is retrograde. But I do think that it is going to be this week that provides a respite, that provides these little moments of understanding, of insight and of breakthrough. The breakthrough is not only because of Mars. That Mars adding heat, well, that allows us to bring that much more, not only emotional focus, but also mind level focus as well. What do we need to think about again? That's Mercury retrograde, doing things over again. But it is at the end of the week that we have an especially distinct connection taking place. Mercury will connect in harmony with Uranus. Now, this is actually the second time that these two planets are meeting as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. The first time took place about three weeks ago. And the next time these two planets speak in this way, the third and final time as part of this Mercury retrograde season, that is going to be in the second part of March. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But to me, that feels as if we are on the verge of the new and the next and the lucky break. That's how I see a harmonious connection with Uranus. Now, for it to be truly lucky that seems to fall into our lap, that's the type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. That's not what we have happening here. What we have here is what astrologers, again, call a sextile. So sextiles are easy energy, they're harmonious energy but they have that little bit of understanding that you have to work to make the most of it. And in that sense, it is sextiles that some consider more fortunate than trines because they allow us some measure of control. They allow us some measure of agency. We're able to see, you know, if I take this action, we get the inspiration. If I take this action, it will lead me in a direction of reaping gains. And as a result of taking that action, we do actually end up reaping gains and we feel that much more fortified. We feel that much more momentum to go forward. When it's a trine, it's famously said that trines can make us lazy because the good things just show up and we think, oh, this is great. This is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's always going to be, is something that we can kid ourselves into thinking. I actually think there's a reason why the energies of the world, of the cosmos, are so varied, not only because we are varied, but also because there are all kinds of ways in which to bring forward our best, our compassion, our learning, our lessons, uh, our awareness of our spiritual truths. They don't only come about through easy, harmonious ways. They also come about through effort, through diligence, through work. Sometimes they come about through tension and through having to ask the questions that tension asks us to, tapping into deeper motivation that tension asks us to, and thereby transcending a certain circumstances, becoming stronger as a result. That is the purpose of the square. 
And the squares are also dominant this week, but in a different way. As much as we have this beautiful Piscean energy and at the end of the week, some blessing coming back around, some opportunity knocking again that we feel so grateful for, Mercury is still retrograde, so do keep that in mind. Where possible, try not to come to any solid agreements or contracts with energy like this. But I know that sometimes it's not necessarily the case, and in that case, you do have to trust your life. But with that beautiful, fortunate, quick-moving energy, getting that letter, getting that uh, great notice energy that is there towards the end of the week, Throughout the week, we've got this square energy playing out with Venus. Now, it was the last week that Venus was essentially unaspected, meaning that Venus was kind of wandering around on her own, uh, moving through the sign of Aries. Well, she's still moving through the sign of Aries this week, but now she starts getting active, connecting with other power players in these conversations of tension and motivation. At the beginning of the week, she connects with Jupiter in this way, and at the end of the week connects with Pluto. Now, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, it is gonna be early next week that Venus will connect with Saturn in a square, and then as we move into next week, we'll change signs coming home to the sign of Taurus, a wonderful placement for Venus. So Venus is gonna go from the energy that she's in now, which isn't a comfortable energy for her. Um, the opposite sign of Aries is Libra, and that is one of Venus's home signs. So it's like Venus being far from home, just like us when we're far from home. Uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult to navigate. That's kind of how it is right now with Venus moving to the sign of Aries. These squares aren't necessarily going to help that, but thankfully this is just a moment and it will pass. So with this energy, at the start of the week, Venus speaking with Jupiter, that energy is overindulgent. That's the best way to put it. It is uh, one where we may not necessarily be seeing things in a grounded perspective, may not be seeing things very accurately. Yes, there is that sense of some uh, heightened feelings, heightened emotion can sometimes play out here. Escapism can sometimes play out here as well. But I do also think that this energy ultimately, it's not very realistic. And so it can have us on a little bit of a roller coaster with a week like this. And as I said, it's overindulgence. Think of Venus, what she represents. Yes, it's love, but it's also beauty and money and spending and pleasure. Well, these are areas where we're that much more likely to overdo it. And think about this, it is a Mercury retrograde right about now. and so that in and of itself does suggest that spending isn't necessarily the best way to use our resources it's a much better time to do things like uh, reuse and recycle rather than to go out and acquire new things and then you add to it the sense of us uh, being indulgent with our finances or spending a lot of money wanting better and better things rather than just being grateful for what it is we have which is one of the higher spiritual understandings of Mercury retrograde. And so here we have Venus uh, speaking with Jupiter, being all in her feels, being all in her abundance, and then consequences towards the end of the week. That's Pluto having to look at things in a more stark light, in a more profound way, having to tap into a deeper understanding, but also an understanding of what needs to change, what needs to transform. So that's one way this energy can play out. But of course, this is Venus, goddess of love. So many people may experience this in the context of love. I feel like at the start of the week, whatever may be happening for us in matters of heart, we may not necessarily be seeing it from a very grounded perspective or seeing it very accurately. But it is towards the end of the week that it can feel like there is this faded pull towards people who maybe are not good for us or maybe are complicated in some way. In fact, that may end up being even more attractive in some cases. There can be that pull of attraction that feels decidedly inconvenient under a sky like this. Now, what we do with it and what you do with it 
is always up to you to decide in light of your unique circumstances. But remember, as I said, and I gave you a little bit of a heads up, next week we are going to have Venus connecting with Saturn in tension as well. To me, that is a reality check that is set to take place. Now, whether it is that some of these emotions are playing out in the context of uh, a particular person and an interaction you're having with them, whether it's playing out more in terms of ourselves and our own feelings, or whether it's playing out more in terms of our relationship to money, to resources, to our appreciation of self-value, of self-love, these are all the domain of Venus and all of this can be highlighted under a sky like this. And so it may feel like a little bit of a roller coaster. Now that roller coaster may look a little bit different depending on what part or what face of Venus you are tapping into or that you are deciding to ride at a time like this, but it will lead us to a place where we are being more honest and we're having to honestly evaluate what are the practical measures? What is the reality? What are we actually being shown? What is being demonstrated to us? With all that dreamy energy that's already there with that Piscean energy, it may be hard to tap into a more grounded perspective, but it is coming and it is right around the corner. And considering how much Capricornian energy there is, right? With Jupiter and Mars and Pluto, being activated all in the sign of Capricorn, that is where we can bring in a more grounded perspective. That is where we can keep our bigger picture in mind, what it is ultimately that's worth aiming for, what's worth achieving. But more importantly, with Capricorn, the higher spiritual understanding of this energy is how it is you earn your own self-respect. And that happens in part by what you consistently do. And so part of the invitation of this week with the bit of a roller coaster with a lot of the fantasy playing out right now is going to be to have that understanding, to have that appreciation that there are certain things that we can do, certain actions we can commit to that ultimately will help us to affirm a healthy sense of self-respect and that matters. Self-respect is one of those intangible things that's so incredibly valuable that it can be priceless once you have it. And how is it now that we're going to live that? How is it now that we're going to demonstrate that we fully own that? Well, a week like this may give us those very opportunities, not only to learn, but also to demonstrate our healthy sense of self. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. But I actually love that beautiful connection late in the week between Mercury and Uranus. That's playing out right at the end of the week for most people, right around Saturday. And it is that energy that does suggest things are moving very quickly, very much by surprise. When a planet is retrograde, its energies already can feel like there's a measure of fate in there. And then you have Pluto, the planet of fate, being activated or activating Venus right about now. And then we have this delight, right? We have this surprise that can feel faded in a different way. It can really feel like there are good things in the world for us and that the universe truly is abundant. That opportunity doesn't only knock once. I think that is one of the uh, really most limiting beliefs a person can have. Believing that ultimately um, is an affirmation of a lack of abundance. And the universe is so abundant, there are so many ways in which opportunities can find us. They may look different on the surface, but ultimately they allow us to get to the same aim. And that aim is always how it is that we can be our most authentic self and further move towards greater love and greater wisdom than we knew before. Well, it is now that feelings and mind and thought, they're all meshed and integrated. Now that can feel especially challenging right about now with this particular sky, with Mercury in Pisces and retrograde as well. But then we get these moments of clarity, these moments of breakthrough, and these moments of Mercury speaking in harmony with Uranus, well, that is sheer excitement and a lot to be happy about. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, hit that notification bell, all of that. I absolutely do appreciate it and I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more all of this in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there i have partnered with cosmogram to provide you with brand new natal chart readings my interpretation of your natal chart printed out for you as a pdf emailed to you as well thank you so much to all the orders it's really exceeded the expectations that Cosmogram had. I know how hard I worked on this, filling out all the different sections. Um, you can visit the link below, and there you can actually generate a, a sample to see exactly what it is that you get. And it is now, that is the last week of the 50% discount. So that 50% discount is only gonna be active until the end of the month. So you still have a chance to get it for 50% off and thank you for the wonderful feedback that it has been getting i did want to mention as i did mention last week we had a little bit of an issue with a few people out there and i have been speaking uh, to cosmogram working to resolve it and it does look like the issue has been resolved and so what had happened and i did want to explain some charts a very small percentage of charts were not calculated correctly now these were charts uh, that were of people who would be born in the U.S. in particular years and particularly people born in the Midwest and on the West Coast of the United States. So of all the orders out there, this only affected about one and a half percent of the American orders uh, of people born in the U.S. And so I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry about that. And I know how hard Cosmogram has been working and how sorry they are as well. There's been this outpouring of love and support and encouragement from you guys. And I appreciate that so, so very much. And so Cosmogram has assured me that they have these all new protocols in place to ensure that they are generating the correct uh, charts for people now and the correct interpretations for people now and sending those out of the people who initially got a chart interpretation that wasn't calculated correctly because those particular places that I mentioned, they had some uh, daylight savings times and time zone changes that happened uh, in a particular time frame that ended up affecting um, the accuracy of the hour that the chart was generated for. Um, for those people, they've already been contacted and in addition, uh, Cosmogram has offered them a free numerology reading. The free numerology reading is, I believe, on sale for $23. So they're giving that as a gift for the inconvenience to the people who uh, had issues with their charts not being calculated correctly at first. So that is something that they have been doing. They have said that they have contacted people or been in contact with people as well uh, where there were and where there has been that problem identified, but the problem is now solved. Thank you, thank you for your patience. This is what happens during Mercury retrograde. Even though I launched this just before Mercury went into shadow, thinking I could just escape it still, here's Mercury retrograde. Even when things are well established and long established, still little things can come up and there are good ways to use Mercury retrograde like this allowing us and allowing Cosmogram in particular uh, to ensure that the right protocols are placed so that accurate charts are sent out. And so my sincere apologies to anybody who had that issue. I know how hard Cosmogram has been working. They've been so stressed. They've been so sad about it. And now, as I said, they have put certain protocols into place to prevent that from happening. And the discount code, because of that issue happening uh, earlier this month, that discount code was only supposed to be active until Halloween. Now they've made that 50% discount code active until the end of the month. I don't have the software. Cosmogram owns the software. Basically how it worked was they said, okay, these are the different sections that need to be filled. 
like for example if you have your sun in the first house or your sun in a particular sign or your sun squaring a particular planet or trying a particular planet all of that ends up being a whole section and so all together it was like 780 sections that i wrote that i filled out it was a whole lot of work uh, but it was a uh, very very fulfilling to be able to do that and to know that that is available to you guys and so i know that the overwhelming majority the overwhelming majority of people have gotten their download had absolutely no problem were ridiculously happy with it and then i know that a small percentage out there their initial charts may not have been calculated correctly and for that you have my sincere apology and i know that you have cosmograms apology as well and stuff like this it does uh keep you humble that's for sure but it also fills me with a lot of gratitude for the graciousness and the patience that you have shown. And again, if you are one of those people who uh, did get a chart that wasn't calculated correctly, you would have already been contacted by Cosmogram, so it has been corrected, and you would have also been offered the free numerology report. So I hope that you absolutely enjoy that. And again, thank you for your trust. Thank you in uh, your trust in my interpretation of your chart. And I hope you love and cherish your printed chart uh, for a very long time to come. You know, interestingly, I uh, actually, the first real big epiphany, a turning point I had way back when I was in my late teens was my aunt gifting me one of these computer uh, generated printout reports. And I remember feeling like it was me on paper. It was such a powerful experience. And when I started as a full-time astrologer, I had the intention of one day doing this. And so it took, you know, 13 years, 13 and a half years of being a full-time astrologer to get here. But now here we are, and it makes it that much more fulfilling that I could provide that to somebody. And interestingly, I still have that report, actually. I still have that report. It's in a box, uh, in a closet in my parents' house in Canada, but I still held on to that and I cherish it and it means so much to me. And so now, as you get this PDF, I also hope that you will cherish it and love it for a very, very long time to come. And again, thank you. And so yes, last week to get 50% off after that it'll go to full price I do believe it is like 42 or 43 dollars USD it's just under 40 euro is how much the report costs and uh, to get 50% off is a good discount and uh, I hope you love and cherish it always I have new books new books coming out very very soon and a brand new study group as well with downloads and meditations and all kinds of fun that we are going to have together over the course of 2020. so the first book of course the recently released back in december book the body and the cosmos uh, it was a number one new release as a new age astrology book in that category new age astrology on amazon and i thank you so much and so this book is available as an ebook and as a hard copy book wherever books are sold so you can get that now and prayers to the sky is coming out march 15 right around the corner is when prayers to the sky is coming up pre-orders on amazon for the ebook are now available but this is the final draft final copy uh, that i got and i'm very very excited about this it uh, is very, very encouraging and very meaningful to me as well. So with Prayers to the Sky, it is uh, looking at the planets from a mythological perspective. It touches on astrological magic. It touches on prayer as well and helping you to understand how it is to connect with these sacred energies within you ultimately and to understand it as a sacred relationship that you are having with yourself. And so this book speaks a lot to what I believe it is deeply meaningful to me and the wonderful feedback it has been getting means so much. To, so thank you to everybody who got the advanced copy of this book. Now you can get the pre-order. So if you got the advanced copy or you've pre-ordered it on Amazon and you forwarded the receipt to us, you will get access to the study group. Now the very first session of the study group is going to meet this Monday. And how it works is um, every new moon, I have a new moon hangout with superstars. And so following the new moon hangout with superstars, there will be um, the new moon hangout 
every month over 2020, starting this month, uh, where we will look at a different chapter. So even if you haven't gotten the book yet, you can still come to the study group, enjoy the first class. I was going to make it on the sun, but it's also Q and A. It's very open so we can actually talk and we will do a class on each of the planets or rather a study group on each of the planets. So I'm answering your follow-up questions that you may have. And then together we will do a meditation and I'll show you how I do it when I, uh, what I shared in this book, how do I actually live it? That's what I will demonstrate to you. So if you can join us live, that's great. If you can't, that's okay too. You will get the digital download following the class. And um, it's just gonna be so much fun. <laughs> I think it'll be so great. And I'm looking forward to spending time uh, with people who have read the book, who are exploring, who are on the spiritual path and on the spiritual journey. So again, the first class is taking place this Monday. It'll always be within a couple of days of the new moon, either just before or just after. And uh, like the new moon hangouts that I do uh, with superstars. And it'll always be in different time zones as well because I want to acknowledge that there are people all over the world uh, who are participating in this. So I try to accommodate and have it be uh, in a way so that people who are in different places of the planet can at least join us live once in a while. And so it is taking place. Our first class is taking place Monday evening, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So there's still time to join us live for the very first study group meeting. And that is by getting the pre-order on Amazon. And again, only the ebook is available for pre-order, but the hard copy will publish at the, at the same time as the pre-order. And, um, and I hope you love the book and forward us the receipt from Amazon so that we have that and we can be sure to send you the links to put you on the list so that you're always sent the links and you'll normally get 24 to 48 hours advance notice as to when the study group is gonna take place uh, around the new moon. So be on the lookout for your email. That is coming very soon uh, to people who are already registered and if you register right away as well live events i've got a bunch of live events coming up synchronicity university for now is over we'll have the q a for students who joined me during the winter session coming up next week so i look forward to meeting students online in class but where it comes to in-person events that's really going to kick up for me over the course of the spring so first i am going to be in istanbul as part of astrology days it's this wonderful weekend that happens the last weekend of March in Istanbul with world-renowned astrologers joining me, teaching astrology over the course of the weekend. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to connecting with friends and fans out in Istanbul again uh, because I was there back at the end of 2016, I think it was, and I absolutely loved it. Last time I went with my mom, this time I'm coming with my dad. I'm like, Dad, you gotta check out Istanbul. So that's gonna be fun. And meeting my friends, who are my fellow astrologers that I know and I know are incredible astrologers as well. So friends and fans in Turkey, I look forward to meeting you in Istanbul. Immediately after that, I fly to Bangkok, Thailand. I already have my ticket to fly out of Istanbul, direct flight right to uh, Thailand. And I'm really, really looking forward to that because Bangkok is one of my very favorite cities. And in Bangkok, uh, I will be teaching over the course of a weekend uh, astrology, holistic health, and transformation. I will be um, catering the classes towards beginners. And so we really are gonna go from the beginning, take kind of a slower pace, if you will, but astrologers of any level are gonna be able to participate and join in. So what that means is I won't get too nerdy, I won't get too tech talk where it comes to the techniques, but I will teach you the things that I think are going to make the most difference in relation to what I will be teaching. So have a look at that. I will put it up here as well uh, so you can see, and all the links are in the description below on my website as well. Really looking forward to meeting friends and fans out in Bangkok, Thailand, one of my very favorite cities in the world. And then in May is when uh, my tour kicks up again. It is going to be early May that I will be at 
astrologyrisingcostarica.com. And this is truly a special event. Um, it is hosted by Kai Pacha. He's had this event before. It's always super, super successful and brings a lot of people uh, to Costa Rica. And the great thing is that we're gonna have the whole resort to ourselves. So this resort and 200 people, like-minded people all into astrology. Kaipacha has put together an incredible schedule and you can go on to astrologyrisingcostarica.com where you actually can see what you'll be doing hour to hour. Like he really breaks it down, all the different events that are taking place, all the classes that are taking place as well. And so I will be teaching on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And I think that's gonna be just so much fun. First of all, to be in Costa Rica, to be among some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today. Some of them I've started introducing you to on this channel. Some of them you've known before as well on this channel. Maurice Fernandez, Rick Levine, uh, Kaipacha, as I mentioned, Christina Claudel, Sol Janison, who you recently saw on my channel, or Janison, as she taught me how to say her name. Uh, she was on my channel recently, I interviewed her, so that was posted earlier this week. And we have Timothy Holloran and Ari Wolf and Julia Sima. So just brilliant astrologers. I really look forward to meeting you in Costa Rica. I know so many people have already signed up. They've been messaging me or posting and saying, hey, Nadia, I signed up for Costa Rica. I'm gonna see you there. And I'm like, yay. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I know some of the people who are coming it's a great group of people. Learn astrology, be with like-minded people, participate in different spiritual events, and be in Costa Rica. So there's lots of great things happening there. Other events right after Costa Rica, I will be speaking in Toronto. It's an afternoon workshop where I'll be looking at past lives in the astrology chart, and that is um, happening with Astrology Toronto. So you can find that uh, in the links below and join me in my hometown of Toronto. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And after that Memorial Day weekend, I will be in Seattle with the Norwalk Conference. Always incredible and experience. Again, filled with world-class astrologers and uh, truly legendary astrologers will be joining me there as well. And then I will head to Las Vegas. I'll be back in Vegas. I love, Vegas is also one of my very favorite cities, I have to say. It's such a powerful place. Um, in so, so many ways. So I'm looking forward to that. And I will be teaching with the NCGR Stargazers group on the last Tuesday of May and the last Saturday of May. So wherever it is I'm in the world, I look forward to meeting you there. I will then uh, not be touring. That's my intention not to tour over the summer. I'll be doing another session of Synchronicity University in the summer. And so we'll be able to connect online. And then in September, I will be in Colorado as part of the ESAR conference. So lots of places to meet, to hug, to take selfies, to get books. I'll have a limited number of books wherever it is that I go. Uh, and so just lots of wonderful opportunities to connect with friends and fans, and I'm truly looking forward to it. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your love, for your patience, for your enthusiasm, just all of it. I am truly so grateful for it. And I wish you all good things this week and beyond, and it'll be a great week. Enjoy.